I'm going to mention Reg A plus advantages to do an IPO versus uh, an S1 IPO here. So essentially, there are really a couple of big advantages. One is that the marketing of the offering itself creates a lot of brand ambassadors, um, which is helpful, right? You can't do that in an S1. That's very, you know, it varies according to the nature of the company, how valuable that one is. Another one is that in, a, in an S1 IPO, let's say you have to raise $12 million to list on the NASDAQ, and you reach a point where the underwriters come back and say, you know, we're at 9 million, we can't make 12, uh, and they're not willing to change anything. There's nothing to do to improve it. Then guess what? Your offering failed. All the expense, which was significant, uh, has been incurred, but you can't bring in one dollar. You had nine million lined up, but you can't close on any of it. That would be the ultimate frustration, of course. In a Reg A plus IPO, you are allowed to close the investors that you, you've got. In fact, my general recommendation is, it depends on the climate and it depends on the company, right? If your company is so compelling that we provide a service of lining up underwriters for a Reg A plus IPO if you want to do that. If you want, and we can help you find them to qualify and see if your company is worth. It will get the right attention to do an IPO by a Reg A plus or S one for that matter. So that's a service that we do offer. But my point is that at the beginning, a lot of the companies essentially the underwriters have it too easy at the moment. And they're saying things like, yeah, raise 8 million and get some strategics and, and then come back and we'll do, we'll do your offering with great pleasure, right? That's the sort of thing that you will hear in many cases. So, yeah, right, we can raise the 8 million in a reggae plus, why not? Close the money and that's a significant advantage. If it turns out for some reason the IPO couldn't complete, then it doesn't matter because we close, we close a lot of money along the way and you, you know, it wasn't a waste of time. The other big advantage is that the service providers, especially the auditors and the securities attorneys, charge a hell of a lot less when you're doing a Reg A plus than they do when you're doing an S1 IPO. Drastically lower prices. And you don't, and you don't need PCA or B audits in your Reg A plus that you intend to list on the NASDAQ. Post listing on the NASDAQ, then the first quarter after listing, you have to have a PCA or B audit. But you don't have to have one just in case ahead of time. Your US GAAP audit is enough. So you save a lot of money in audit and securities attorney's fees. And you have that flexibility to close the money for Christ's sake, which, you know, let's, let's make sure we bring in money versus almost bringing it in. Those are, the, those are the advantages. The disadvantage is it's capped at 50 mil. And if your company can carry more than that in, a, in an S1 IPO, you know, if you can raise 300 million, you should do it with an S1 IPO, with the underwriter support that goes along with that, right? That's, a, you know, we aren't doing Reg A plus, Reg A plus IPOs, raise 300 mil, because we're not allowed to.